Please like and subscribe for more tutorial for beginners. New videos every day. In this lecture, we're going to talk about getting together a design brief. And so we understand why it's so crucial to get a design brief. I want to illustrate this by sharing with you an experience I had a few years ago. Normally, when we want to do designs, we just ring up somebody and we say, well, we want to do a flyer or we want to put together a magazine and the person will say, okay, how many pages is the magazine? And we'll tell them what it is and we'll send them the text for the magazine and they'll put together a magazine and then we have to go through it and then edit it and then change the colors and then, you know, really just go through an, a complete change from what the sent us. But then we began to use one company, which was a well-known brand amongst the bigger companies, even though they will work with small businesses, but they generally work with big businesses. Do you know what? When we called them up and we said we wanted to design a flyer, they said to us, hang on, we want to have a meeting first to find out about your company, about your business, about your vision, about where you're going in the future before we can even sit down to design a flyer. And I thought that was a complete waste of time. But you know what? When they came to see us, we sat down and they asked loads of questions and then they went away and then began to work with us by first designing a flyer for us. The flyer was exactly what we really, really had in mind. In fact, they produced a flyer better than what we could have ever requested. What's the difference between the two companies? One works professionally, the other one doesn't. Now, when it comes to designing a website, I want you to understand that most web designers are not going to ask you much. <laughs> okay? And that's not a problem as long as you know exactly what you want because you have composed or put together what I want to look at now, a design brief. Okay? This will really help you. What's the first thing you want to look at when you're putting together your design brief? You want to write down the purpose for your website. Why really do you want to set up a website? I set up a website because you want to become the industry leader or your market leader within your particular industry, or you want to be the go-to person within your niche. Why are you setting up uh, your own website? You write a paragraph on that. The second thing you need to ask yourself is, what are the people that I want to reach? What are their demographics? Are they between the ages of 20 to 25 or 20 to 30 or over 40s or over 50s or, you know, who are the people I'm trying to reach? And what are their psychographics in terms of what do they value? What's their area of interest? What's their attitude to life? What are they open to receive? You need to put that together also in a summary so that you understand who your website is going to appeal to. And that can come from the customers that you're trying to attract. Then the third thing to think about very carefully is the types of products you are likely to sell on your website. Are you going to sell finished online courses? Are you going to sell physical products? Because that will inform the theme you choose, the layout of your site, and pretty much where you host and how you ho host your content and the kind of plugins you're going to use and so many other things like that is going to inform the shopping platform that you're going to use. It's going to inform a lot of things. So you need to think carefully about the products that you're going to sell both now and in the future. And then the fourth thing to look at is to put together a list of or links of other websites that you really like. Because when you're talking to a designer, you want to give them all this information. You want to give them the purpose of your site, the people you want to attract, the products that you're thinking of uh, selling on your site, and, and of course, the content you're going to put on your site. Plus, also, you're going to look at, you know, these are the examples of the website that I like. And I suggest you look at the market leaders. Look at what the market leaders are doing and then choose some of those websites that you like and get your designer to have a look at those. That's really important for them to come up with something that fits with where you are right now 
and also fits with what your ideal clients are looking for. And then finally, also really important aspects of the design brief is to take a long-term view on how you're going to create your website. Do not let web designers rush you into creating a 20-page website. No, you got to have a long-term view. You might say, well, I'm only going to create a four-page website right now, and then in a few months' time, I'm going to go for a second phase, a phase two of it. Do not allow yourself to be pushed down the alley of, oh, you've got to have all these bells and whistles right now. I think if you put together a design brief, it not only helps you to carefully consider where you are going as a web owner, it also helps your web designer to come up with a better website than they would ordinarily have created if we did not have a design brief that you presented to them. And the third thing why I think this is so important is because once you have a design brief, it's easier for you to use contractors. It's easier for you to use people who are not gonna ask much questions, but are good at creating a website because you're gonna direct them in the path you want them to follow. So that's what's gonna, that's why it's crucial that you create a design brief before you start employing the expertise of a web designer. Okay? All right. I'll see you in the next lecture as we go look at some colors that you might want to put into your design brief too. See you soon. The colors you use for your website are absolutely important because colors do communicate certain types of images in the minds of your clients and your customers. So choosing the best colors that represents your brand is absolutely essential. If you think about websites that a lot of people just slap colors together without any major thought about what they're trying to communicate. Now I found an article online and I'm going to just read to you some of the briefs on that particular article that helps you to understand the importance of colors in business. And I'm very glad that I can tell you that if you go onto my website, which is startyourbusinessacademy.com, you would see the kind of image I'm trying to communicate and what the colors actually represent. So let's go through some of the colors and let's see what they represent. Red is a physical color which calls for action to be taken. It's high energy and strength draws attention to itself and demands to be noticed. It's high energy and strength draws attention to itself and demands to be noticed. That's why you would see that when it comes to pay now, buy this now, the buttons, the pay buttons, the action buttons are generally red. That's why. Meaning of orange. So what does orange mean? Orange is a color of adventure which inspires and creates enthusiasm. It is optimistic and sociable and suggests affordability. So if your website is relating with, you know, if you want to communicate a sense of adventure, a sense of enthusiasm, then you've got to use orange. What about yellow? Yellow is an illuminating and uplifting color which stimulates our analytical processes and assists with mental clarity. So if you're teaching things that are a little bit complex on your website, well, you want to use quite a bit of yellow so that you can communicate that ability to analyze, to make what is complex very simple. Hey, if it's green, green is associated with nature, health, healing. It balances the emotions and inspires compassion. So depending on what your website is, you need to choose colors that would truly represent and inspire your particular clients. Turquoise balances and recharges the emotions and inspires good communication skills and self-expression. What about blue? Blue is the safety color to use in most applications implies honesty, trust, and dependability. That's why your links are, guess what, are in blue. Indigo is a powerful and strong color which conveys integrity and sincerity. It is associated with structure. Let's go to one more or two more. Purple. Purple inspires wealth, 
quality, fantasy, and creativity. So your logo can actually carry the colors that represent what you're trying to communicate to your clients. Silver is a modern, sophisticated color, calming yet uplifting with a degree of mystery about it. What about black? Black is the color of power and authority. And in excess, it can be intimidating and unfriendly. What about white? White is a blank canvas waiting for creativity to be stimulated. It implies efficiency and simplicity, fairness, and order. In a nutshell, you've kind of seen how colors relate to the various aspects of our businesses. And absolutely, colors have a major Colors are a major player when it comes to your website design. So really think about the colors you want to use for your logo, for your pages, for your content, and let those colors be carried through in every aspect of your website. All right. Hope you got a lot out of these colors. I really love it. See you soon.